Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm gonna to be working on a very simple terrarium project using some ferns. That's what I'm doing here in the Hartley. I needed to grab the ferns. Now, it is so bright and sunny out today, but the wind has come up and it's bringing in that massive cold front. See the trees out there moving around? And it's a chilly breeze. And our forecast shows, I don't know if you can see that. This camera is not the best at focusing close up, but uh, next week we have a negative five on the forecast. It's been playing with me all week. I keep looking at it and it will bump up to like seven and it'll go down to zero. And then maybe it'll, it showed 11 at one point and I thought, well, that's not too bad. Um, and now it's showing negative five. So dang it. Anyway, I'm grabbing the ferns in here. They're these little guys. And we are gonna head to the studio uh, where we're gonna do this project. These are so cute and the perfect size for this project. I'm gonna need to tuck them in somehow in my vest so that they're warm on the walkover. There, that'll do. It's very warm in the Hartley right now. It's very warm, I'd have to take off a layer. I've ordered an extra ceramic heater for the chicken coop and I've got the cats uh, heated beds all lined up and ready to go in the greenhouse. Okay, I've got some stuff already out here. I went out to the greenhouse and I grabbed the Irish moss because I think that that would be perfect in a terrarium situation. I have my little itty bitty shovel right here. Uh, this is the container we're gonna be using. It's actually a complete glass bottom. So it just rests down in this like, I don't know, it's is kind of like terracotta concrete. It's really heavy, uh, but it sets down in this base. So we're just gonna be tossing some charcoal in there, some potting soil. I've got the little ferns. I've also got this little four inch fern that's really pretty, more mossy looking. May not need to use this though if we use this. I don't know. I'm not sure how it'll all come together, but I think it's gonna be pretty. Now trying to uh, have a glass container that you need to see through look good on camera can be difficult. So we'll try to do our very best to show, Erin's gonna help me, to show you um, what I'm doing inside this terrarium. But in the end, we'll try to get it in the best light possible so that you can see through the glass and you can see all the details. But I anticipate this being very simple. I just kinda wanted to walk you through the layers of things that I put in a terrarium and how I put one together. The thing I love about this specific terrarium is that because it's a non-draining container, which most terrariums are, they don't drain, uh, you have to very much so monitor how much water you're giving them. But if we're in question, I could lift this up and take a look underneath and we could see exactly how much moisture is in there and whether or not our container actually needs to be watered. Um, now this one will dry out a little bit quicker than a more enclosed sort of terrarium situation would. In fact, I know there are some terrariums you can put together and seal up and there are some people who just don't even open them. Like they just create their own environment inside and they don't need anything from us, from the outside world. Uh, and I think that is a really cool thing. I'd love to put one together like that someday. Um, but our layering here, you might see terrariums that have like a gravel layer and soil and moss and all that stuff. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna put at the bottom of mine is a little bit of charcoal. And what that will do is help absorb any kind of smell. If there's any smell at all at any point, that's what that, that charcoal does. That's what it helps with. So we're gonna put a little bit in there like that. And I do not put a gravel layer in here. And I don't recommend in any container that you put a gravel layer in, unless you're doing some gigantic container with a huge reservoir and you're not using plants with a really extensive root system that won't utilize all the space. That's the only instance where I can see that being helpful. But what happens if you put a rock layer at the bottom of your container, it just moves that point of saturation in your soil where all the water collects up closer to the root systems of your plants and it can make them um, a lot more vulnerable to rotting. And I think that there's a picture that exists somewhere. I'll try to find it and we can put it on the screen of what it does when you put gravel in there. You can put a faux layer of gravel, which we will do. I'm gonna grab a bit of soil. This is what we're using right here. I'm gonna put it down below though because I don't have room on my table. Okay, so I'm gonna pour a little bit into the bottom. Nice thing about this one too is that it's easy to plant in because you can get your hand in there. I don't know how people plant in those like real skinny necked bottles. Like really, you can fashion yourself some really long tools to work with. Okay, there's a little bit right there. We don't need a lot. Now at this point, we've got the charcoal, a little bit of soil. If you do want it to look like there's a rock layer, you can create yourself a faux layer just around the edge. You don't need it in the rest of your container. So we're gonna do that. At 
This is just aquarium uh, rock right here in the color Aztec bronze. I think it's pretty. It feels like an age since I've put together a terrarium. I love it. It's so fun. I'm going to build it up a little higher in some spots and a little lower in other spots so it doesn't look completely uniform. I think at this point I'm going to work on planting. Finding plants small enough to go in a terrarium can also be a little bit of a difficult thing, but don't be afraid to remove some root system. Let me kind of clear my space here. We're just going to remove any of the loose soil here and kind of fluff the roots out so they're a little bit more flat rather than, you know, the straight up and down like the container is. Makes them a little bit easier to place. That's about perfect right there. I think we'll go in right about in that location. We can shift things around if we feel like we need to later. I have zero vision as to how this is actually going to come together. So this is going to be an evolving process here, you guys. This is a peperomia right here, and I think I can separate it. I kind of looked in there and it looked like there might be two, yeah, two plants, perfect. We'll repot this one. This one just needs to be groomed up a bit. Oh, so it doesn't have much of a root system. Hopefully it's okay. We'll keep an eye on it. And our Irish moss here, I think I've got a pair of Falcos. These are a total pain to get plants out of, especially when their roots have made it down that far. I'm just gonna cut it off. Perfect. Make sure I don't need to groom it anywhere. I'm gonna flip this thing around because I think I wanna pop this piece right in here. packing soil around the root ball. So I'm just gonna go slow at this every step of the way. I'm gonna flip it back, so see if I like it. <laughs> oh, that's kinda neat, yeah. Need to build this up just a little bit now. Okay, I'm gonna pop a larger stone in right here. See how it looks. A little bit more. Just thinking about what I want to put in next. I think more moss around the base of the fern. This one has sweet little white flowers on it. I don't know if you can see those. So itty bitty, but they're so cute. So this one, Irish moss, is hardy to negative 30. What is that? A zone four. And it grows um, out like about a foot and stays really tight to the ground like this. So it's a really good one in between stones and such. Put this one right here. Oh man. <laughs> Went right in here. Can't stand how it does is doing this. I'm gonna see if this will help it from rocking. Okay, so what I did right over here, and I don't know if you could see that very well, is I kind of just worked some soil in 
around the moss and I wanted it to come out and touch the glass over here so it wasn't all rock around the outside, um, just so that there was a little bit more variation and interest. So I think at this point, I'm gonna start building onto this side right over here. And I might even use the rest of this. It's got like two roots. No, it's got five. It's got five roots. Everybody say a prayer for the peperomia. Hopefully it'll survive. It'll certainly be in a nice coddled environment here for a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, I'm just making sure that there's soil around all the root balls because the moss is sitting up a little high. Not too high, but a bit. Okay, let's put this one in. Another little chunk of moss. Drop a little stone right down in here. Okay, I'm gonna spin it back around to myself and study it for a minute. <laughs> This is what I did with a bunch of the moths that I did for our center. I made two centerpieces. Um, there's one in the uh, middle of the table in the Hartley, and the moss is doing great. And then I also did this cut um, thing when I made the driftwood piece with the cyclamen and the fern, and then I filled the rest of it with the moss, and they're all doing really, really great. So that's encouraging. Okay, I've got my other little fern. I'm gonna remove some soil. This one we're gonna tuck in right here. When I wanna get soil somewhere specific, if I kinda squeeze it together, it's got a little bit of moisture. Sometimes it stays together and it makes a little bit less of a mess. There we go. Right around that root ball. So this piece of moss I'm going to tuck in right between the fern and the other piece of moss there. Hopefully it kind of fills that gap nicely. Okay, now what if I put this in? Is that cute? Oh, it is cute. Oh, oh I love that. We need some more stones though. Isn't that cute, Aaron? Do you not like it? I put more RAM on my computer. Do you love the RAM? I love RAM. You underestimate. My love of Ram. Do I underestimate your love of fairy gardens yes. and such? Stones. Okay, I think it's done. I mean, I could fuss with this for a while and I you know, go back and forth on whether or not I want a fairy garden piece in there. If the fairy was not in there, I would probably pop another piece of moss in and just let it be a green space. Um, so that's completely personal. I don't know. What do you think, Erin? I need an opinion. Leave it. You mean to leave it? Yeah. It's kind of cute, isn't it? Okay, so I know that the lights are really glary in here, so I'm gonna run this into the Hartley and where it's probably even more glary with the sun outside, I don't know. We're gonna try our best to give you a really good view of what's going on in here. There's still quite a lot of glare on the glass and I think that I'm gonna be, <laughs> hello, you'll be able to see my reflection, but I can get you close enough to where you can see some of the detail here. I think my favorite part is that little white flower from the Irish moss. I think that is the sweetest thing and I think there's a lot of good color and texture in here. The peperomia, the ferns, the moss, then the stone and the soil, honestly. And in a situation like this, it will stay on the darker side color wise because it'll stay a little bit more moist in there. You can see right above the moss, I popped a little branch in there and I popped one in on this side as well, just to give it a little bit more texture and natural look. And then on the back side, you can see the dreamstone, more Irish moss, the peperomia. You can see more of the fern from this angle as well. And then a view from overhead, you can see everything is nicely tucked in. See a little bit more of the detail when you don't have glass between, <laughs> between us and the plants. Now to water something like this, a syringe is so handy because you can go down in, I can keep a little bit of water away from the peperomias because they're not gonna want quite as much. 
I can give a little bit more to the ferns and the moss. And I can do it in a way that doesn't flood the terrarium to where it dislodges all of this soil and makes it make a huge mess up against our glass. It's so cute and it somehow makes me want to spring even more. There's some, there's some kind of a spring vibe about it. And you guys, that is it for today's project. Just wanted to walk you through the steps that I take to make a very simple terrarium. I hope it was helpful. Um, just talking about the different layers and you know, I've done terrariums before where there's been, you know, layers of gravel and things at the bottom. And I just notice that my plants don't do as well when I do that full on gravel layer in any container that I'm working in or working with. And what did I use in this? Two of the two inch size containers. So the two of those ferns which was, I think they were $2.99 a piece, if I'm not mistaken, so that's $6. I used one four pack of the Irish moss, and that was $3.98, so that brings $10. And then the peperomia was probably $6.99, so $17. And then I had the fairy garden on hand, and I had like the little supplies. It doesn't take much. I mean, it took what, a couple little containers full of soil to get this done, just a little handful of rocks. And then of course you need your container. Uh, and I had this one, I've had this container for a very long time, but I've seen people do really cool terrariums in mason jars um, and just do like very miniature sort of versions and they're just the sweetest thing. So you can really get creative with how you put these together. Um, oh, and the charcoal, you buy a bag of charcoal and you'll have it forever. <laughs> I've been working off that same bag of charcoal since probably when we lived in the old house and probably well, well before we decided to even move. I bet you I've been working off that for like 10, 12 years. An investment that lasts a really long time. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.